Okay, thanks for sending this case in. Uh, this is a, um, a case just submitted and uh, we want to take a review. Uh, it looks like it's site number 19. Uh, it looks like the tooth's been missing for some period of time and we can take a look at uh, what's going on here. So in this particular case, um, you know, I always like to start with um, uh, digital analog. In this particular case, this is clearly a digital scan. As we can see here, we have plenty of natural teeth um, not including this one, and then not including this one, this one, or this one. Uh, the rest of them we could use for integration of data, and since we need two points uh, for integration, we're totally good there. So this is a good case for a digital guide, digital uh, workflow, which would be either the OptiGuide, DigiGuide, or SereGuide 2. Um, and then we can go through and take a look at our checklist, okay? So um, <clears throat> what I always like to do is mesio distally. Uh, so what I'm looking at here is mesiodistally are we pretty well centered between the roots and uh, we look to be pretty well centered and then I'm going to look buccolingually are we pretty well centered between the bone buccal plate and lingual plate and not so bad here you know there's still definitely a little bit more room to the buccal than the lingual but there's a reason for that here so that looks pretty nice as well um, and then our next category that we're going to look at is bone level and here's what I see in terms of the bone and then we can see what we've done here is because we've had some bone loss on that buccal ridge uh, which is very common for this type of resorption to occur uh, this implant has been placed a little bit deeper now I'm not saying that's the incorrect way of doing it um, you know personally my preference would be to place the bone a little bit higher, um, you know, slightly subcrestal to accommodate for some bone loss that we're going to have, and then I would probably go ahead and graft this area at the time of placement, uh, lay a flap, do some decortication, take some uh, uh, some mineralized cortical cancellous bone, mix it with some PRF, and uh, place it in this area, and then uh, place a membrane and place it uh, get primary closure. Uh, should be relatively predictable to do. Um, so that that's one choice here. Uh, so one of the things that would determine where I place this implant, if I do place it this low, would be uh, the addition of some CEREC data to see where our virtual margin would be, and then to be able to use our, our design to um, determine the apical placement. But my gut tells me that I probably want this implant to be somewhere right here. Uh, so for the time being, let's let's leave it alone and let's go here and then let's keep moving on past bone level. Next we have vital structures and we can clearly see that our nerve is well marked, but it's uh, um, our nerve is right here. So the nerve is a non-issue. Our submandibular fossa is pretty straightforward and we got a pretty well defined buccal plate here. So, you know, my, my first step is why do an 8 millimeter implant when we can clearly have the room for a 10 millimeter implant. So I would uh, try to shoot for a 10 millimeter implant. The other thing that I would consider doing in this particular case, um, this looks like an implant direct implant. Uh, one of the things that uh, I know that implant direct has is they have their legacy 3 implant and one of the benefits of the Legacy 3 line is that we could consider using a 5.2 millimeter implant. And I, I believe that a 5.2 millimeter implant would be more than satisfactory width-wise here. Uh, and the other benefit of a 5.2 implant is uses the 4.7 millimeter uh, connection, <clears throat> which allows us to have a platform shift uh, built into the implant. And I, I, I am a big believer in using a platform shift implant, whereas with this, uh, uh, implant direct the re plus there doesn't seem to be a 5.7 millimeter implant and now certainly that could have changed the line could have added it but it's not available in the catalog quite yet uh, but again that's a personal preference uh, after bone level let's take a look at the occlusal table to look at the occlusal table we'll simply drag a line so that we can see the tops of the teeth and what we're looking at here is here I can outline the buccal aspect of my teeth here I can outline the lingual aspect of my teeth, the distal, and the mesial. And now what I can do from this is I can say, hey, this right here looks to be the center. Okay? And we can see we're pretty close. 
not quite perfectly close though okay so what I would like to do in this particular case is just go ahead and um, center this probably about like so okay so now we're centered okay buccalingually you know maybe we can go a little bit more buckle and that's a little bit more centered there as well now the next thing that we're going to look at is our occlusal plane and here is where we see I, I see our most common mistakes our occlusal plane is tilted down and what we do know uh, the red represents the occlusal plane that we have and this would this white line would represent how I would like that occlusal plane to look uh, more in line with the curve of speed so I know that to correct this in this particular case what I need to do is I need to move tilt our implant that way and when I tilt our implant this way about like so now we can start seeing a more natural curve of speed like so now now we can see that our curve of speed is a little bit more straight and that we're going to have long axis now the negative of doing this or the challenge is we have now we have the implant more to the distal as you can see right here so we need to just simply move our implant to the mesial just like so and now we have the best of both worlds we have a much better curve of speed and we have a centered implant okay so that should pretty much take care of our implant and then um now we have everything in place so um, you know everything looks good from here do our 360 and now we can see how everything looks we don't have any bone dehiscences and everything's pretty straightforward now I would like to take the opportunity here to point out one other option in a case like this um, because unfortunately or unfortunately many of our colleagues aren't as comfortable doing graphs on these cases so one option I would like to point out is the use of a different type of implant and that implant would be from Astra they have their profile implant which as you can see here is simply a sloped implant and when we see this sloped implant like this now we can see that this implant is actually made sloped like this so we can avoid actually doing any grafting in this particular case so um, that that certainly is a choice here as well uh, but again that requires uh, having this implant having the surgical kit to go with it and having the timing and rotation to place that implant correctly and certainly we can go to the 11 we could even possibly go to the 13 which would be overkill I think 11 would be plenty here uh, and that option exists so uh, thank you for submitting this case and I look forward to many more